Hey, I'm Tyler, a bike groomer, and here at Seattle, we thought we'd go around a lot of the different suspension companies and just kind of get a sense of, you know, like what's coming, what some of the trends are, and maybe a couple of the unique things that each of the different brands are doing. So I'm going to start off here at MRP with Noah, and you guys have a new coil spring rear shock. So let's talk about that for a second first, and then we'll talk kind of bigger trends and stuff. Sure. Um, it's called the Hazard. Yep. The and Hazard. Uh, in yeah, nutshell, just, what's, what's up with it? In a nutshell, we're bringing coil shocks more to like the trail and enduro bike category. We're seeing increased popularity of those as people just like the performance edge they give you, and uh, those types of bikes are getting so capable that it just takes it to a whole other level entirely. Yeah, which is kind of a trend. There's some other companies starting to spec those on their bikes and everything, but um, so for the people who aren't really familiar with coil, like why? Why would you want to go coil instead of air? Well. It's mainly a performance advantage that a lot of people find. I myself am a coil fan. Um, just find like over long, consistent runs, the performance is just much more consistent than an air shock. It's not as affected by heat, it's not affected by altitude, not affected by a number of environmental conditions. Right. So it's just really consistent, which is super important to somebody like an enduro racer. Um, it's interesting that we've seen like downhill guys gravitate now to air suspension we've seen enduro guys now gravitate towards coil right. and that's confusing to a lot of people but you have to keep in mind that like for an enduro guy a lot of those runs are you know seven to ten minutes long. yeah a lot longer than the yeah. downhill run and so the rear damper of their bike can generate a lot of heat in that time from just taking hit after hit after hit after hit so uh, they love that and they also love the fact that it's super durable um, and, and long lasting performance so it, you only get one you know, one shock when you start an enduro race, they stick to your stuff and you can't oh, switch right. things out, you know, mid ride. So it gives them peace of mind to know that they're so much going to last longer. Stocking a break, right on. Yeah. All right, so you guys are doing something pretty unique with this. You have a standard coil that you get, but then you also have what's called a uh, progressive coil. Yeah, so explain right. that. Yes, yeah, so we have three spring options for this shock the standard steel one, we have a lightweight steel blend too. And then the really cool one, my favorite, is progressive spring. So. With this spring, it kicks up the rate by 20% in the last third of travel. Um, that's really great for using on bikes that were designed for air shocks. There's a lot of bikes out there like the DW Link and VPC that were specifically designed for the progressiveness of an air shock. Because an air shock will ramp up, get firmer as you're going through your travel, right. whereas coils typically don't. It's yeah, it's more linear. Consistent. Yeah. So with this spring, you can get all the benefits we just talked about with coil suspension on a, on a bike that would, yeah. Previously, I've been precluded from using coil. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. And you guys are the only ones doing something like that that you know? Yeah, to my knowledge, we're the only ones doing it for rear shock. I know there's a, there's an aftermarket company doing it for forks, progressive springs for forks, but they're super expensive and they say they're for racing only, but right. it's for everyday use. And yeah, we do that by varying the wind of the spring itself. Huh. So, cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, general, bigger picture stuff like, what do you see? You know, I talked about this, with, or and we'll talk about it with some others. But you know, you're seeing a lot of things about negative air springs getting bigger. What else is kind of coming up or going yeah. on that you guys are interested in? Uh, offsets are another super oh, yeah. popular topic in the suspension world these days. We just started offering. For a while, we've been offering two different offset options for our 29er forks, 51, which has been the standard for a long time, and then a shorter 46 mil offset. We've now taken that a step further and we're offering 41 millimeter offset, oh, wow. so another five millimeters offset. I mean, that's that's got to be a 29er or 27.5 or both. Yeah, that's for the 29 or the 41. Now we have a 39 millimeter offset for 27.5 as well. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, you, so you see that with the transition, transitions new line of bikes, they call it speed balance geometry, where they use longer front center, slacker head angles, and the shorter offset forks. Right, yeah, I know there's a lot of brands doing like a 44 mil offset, is their short version. Yeah, yeah. I think like down to 37 for 27.5. You guys are not really matching either of those numbers. Yeah, we decided we got that 41 number because we the 51 to 46 is a five millimeter jump, five millimeter jump. So we wanted to be consistent with that and actually okay. make it worthwhile instead of just taking a couple of millimeters off the of 46. We wanted to do it with the 45. So. All right. Can yeah. you? What would happen if I took a bike that's designed around a 44 and put a 41 on it? Would it just be? weird or no not at all i mean there are subtle differences i would say but 90 percent of people probably couldn't tell the difference uh the major benefit i see is as bikes have gotten longer it's just easier to get weight over the front right so for cornering you just feel like you can get a little more weight on the front and carve a little bit harder um the downside to short offsets is you they slow down the searing so you have to be a little more on it doesn't right. quite have like the diving into corner effect that a longer offset has. I mean, you can get kind of lazy and enter, corner, enter corners later. This one you got to kind of be on it all the time. But there are pluses and minuses. Um, I think it's nice that we offer that 46 millimeter in between option because 
you know, either here or there, it's a nice little compromise of right. both handling characters. Awesome, man. Anything else worth mentioning? Uh, lockouts are popular again. <laughs> Even on our coil shock here on the hazard, we have an on-the-fly lockout. Right. Um, it does have a blow-off, so if you hit something super hard, you know it'll, it'll have some relief there. But our lockout is a little bit different than competing products because it's a really firm lockout. Like there's a lot of them I've ridden on um, the development of this shock where you're kind of like not sure if you're in the pedal position or the open position. It's really hard to tell. There's no right. questions on our shock. Like it firms it up a lot, which I think is handy for you know. Enduro racing for long transfer stages, or yeah. if your favorite downhill is, uh, you know, at the top of a five-mile road climb, super handy. So, right on. yeah. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, My pleasure. JP Gendron here. That's our Sun Tour. Uh, trends and suspension that are involved in all of our line. Things moving to boost. Um, we work with a piston compensator system, which is an IFP, an independent floating piston. Uh, that's not new for us, but that certainly seems to be a trend right now. Super reliable. Um, it's easy for us to bleed and maintain. Uh, we've had great success with it, and we continue to develop that. Uh, it's interesting to see that kind of becoming more and more of a trend. Uh, mostly it's reliable. It works really well. Um, other things with uh, coil becoming more and more of a trend. We work with a positive air chamber and a coil negative spring. So the small bump compliance is really good, really smooth on that. Again, it's consistent and reliable, which is uh, of high importance to us. Um, and beyond that, uh, expanding the coil into full coil systems is also something that we're working on. All right, we're going to keep our talk about suspension trends going. I'm here at Rock Talks booth with Duncan Ripple, former awesome downhiller, World Cup champion, and all that stuff. Uh, so you know a little bit about suspension. You've been with Rock Talks for how long now? Um, you know, as an athlete, I probably was with Rock Talks for almost 15 years. Wow. And now six years here as uh, you know, PR, marketing, communications. So you've kind of seen a lot of development over the years. Yeah, and absolutely. Like what? I'm seeing from my end from like a lot of brands now is you know the whole thing about bigger negative volume chambers and um, some forks are starting to get IFPs not all of them because some of them use like a closed cell you know closed bladder system like that mm -hmm. um, what are you seeing like what are the trends you guys are kind of excited about in terms of suspension front and rear yeah you know I think you, you're correct you're spot on in the you know the the negative air chamber is becoming larger, and that really is, you know, a, a few things. You know, I'll bring it back and backtrack, and, and kind of start with suspension. You know, when you when you date it back ten years, was always a challenge, right? So you're looking at a bike that can do something, but was always limited by suspension, right? So you know, you look back even further. You go from hardtail from the first dual suspension bikes, right? That was a huge step in the evolution of the mountain bike right. and what you were capable of doing. That being said, you move forward and you're like, okay, now we have suspension. Dual suspension bikes are a total normality. They have to be dual suspension if they're going to be a mountain bike. You know, yeah. that was and kind I mean, of even like the, the that was the trick. XC pros are racing. Absolutely, you know, whether it, yeah, whether it be a, just a soft tail, you know, be it 50 mil travel, 80 mil travel, 100 mil travel, or all the way up to your downer bikes that are like 200 mil travel. Um, you know, it, it was the dual suspension bike, right? But then we were still limited by suspension. There's of course that appear or opinion or like the facade of it it had to be a spring right so you think spring back in the 90s it was like spring fork springer and coil air technology just wasn't there right it was something that had to be advanced most forks were spring right they or last we had not figured out you know air springs at that point or how to keep all of this working properly be smooth enough to where it was going to feel like a spring a coil right? right so in terminology not a spring it's a coil so you know, in regard to your question of where we see it trending, I think we're just on this huge evolution process, right, of the mountain bike. And what's happened recently within, I'd say, the last five years, um, we've seen a huge, you know, and I don't want to say resurgence, but this development of technology with the air spring, right? That was one of the biggest things that we were able to really refine and accomplish within, let's say, for one of the benchmarks in suspension right now, which we pipe. So, you know, you, you were part of and around during the time when we launched Pike, 
and how impactful that was on the mountain bike world, right? It really set a whole new standard and opened the floodgates. Yeah, it did a lot for you guys as a brand too, absolutely. that one port in particular. Yeah. And it absolutely did that for not just us as a brand, but for everybody, right? Everybody then saw what these, what then was small bike became capable of doing, right? Now, now it was like, at that time, even four or five years ago, it was pretty still relatively uncertain how capable a four inch travel bike can be. And now looking at it, it's like four, four inches of travel in a pipe, you're like, yeah, we can, that's a fully capable bike, you can do anything, right? And then we've also refined it down with our air springs, with our cartridge dampers to the point of where we can get the weight down, right? So there's all these things that, you know, again, not to get in the weeds, but when you ask about direction and where we see it going, it's really just a continued evolution of what these bikes, usable bikes, right? And the middle ground can be for the user, whether it be, or even a racer for that matter. So, you know, you look at, you know, racing has always been a very, very impactful and driving um, force in what we as a company or any of our competitors, suspension, drivetrain, frame manufacturing, anything, we look at racers and, and what's trending in that sense of, okay, well, what is, what is happening and what's fastest, right? No matter what, consumers always want something that's fast. That's why we ride bikes. They, we ride and we rad, do fun things, and we want to be fast. We want to be, we want to go out there and like, essentially compete a little bit. That's what we're all out there doing. Thanks to Strava, we are. <laughs> whether some people want to admit it or not, no, I don't compete. No, you do. Like you're out there, whether it's against yourself. Or, yeah, or yourself. Against yeah. yourself or what even your bike is capable of. So, you know, I think that the trending sense really is air spring technology and, and damping technology that we've been able to achieve with now a, a majority of all of our suspension, be it front or rear, you know, we've got super deluxe rear shocks. I think that's, you know, another topic that we'd be good to touch on is what's happened with rear, rear suspension, you know, just as we did with pike, right, we've now tried to balance the bike out, you know, and so rear shock capability really needed to take a step up as well, and that's when we launched Super Deluxe. So, and that's going to, you know, the metric sizing, really refining and simplifying things so that we could produce a better rear shock for all of the frame manufacturers out there. All right. So, and this is the new, this is the latest, right? So this would be actually the new Debonair okay. spring. This would be the and new Debonair spring. This was the prior generation. This, this is the, what we would call legacy air spring that was in our previous versions of said, you know, the Lyric and the Pike. Right. So, so one of the things that gave you guys more volume, I don't know where the port is, but essentially you allow the inside of the, the piston shaft to be used as part of the volume, which, is, which added a lot of volume without having to add magically create more space inside the, yeah. the port's lowers. And then this piece in the seal is all new to reduce friction. Um, yeah, so, you know, and, and to, to really, I guess, kind of reiterate there, so back to, you know, air spring technology, that has really been, you know, I hate, <laughs> I hate the term game changer, but it really has been. So, you know, I look back to downhill World Cup racing, you know, I competed on the World Cup circuit for 10 years, and something we just could not get dialed as a racer, and granted I wasn't part of Rock Chalks at that time, but I was a Rock Chalks athlete, is getting that air spring to feel like a coil spring, right? That was, that's always been a challenge across the board for, I mean, anybody can vouch for that five years ago, no matter what, an air spring on the rear or an air spring on the front was noticeable as an air spring. And what does that entail as a user? You know, in case anybody's curious, it's obviously that initial breakaway force, which is just not soft, it was harsh, because you're dealing with air right at the top instead of that linear spring that's gonna just move up and down, and it's a spring, we all know what they right, do. Yeah. But an air spring is just, just that, where you put more air in and it becomes rigid off the top. So what we're able to do is create that negative chamber, right, that going right back to the beginning of this conversation. That was all the back, now back to the front. Negative air spring has allowed us to make it more supple off the top, and then once it passes through that negative and into the positive, that's where it engages and gives you that support that you obviously need from any suspension because you don't want to just dive through. Right, all right, I'm gonna test your uh, engineering knowledge here. Don't so, do that because I'm not an engineer. <laughs> Remember that, kids, I'm not an engineer. There are people much smarter that create this stuff. He's not the one designing the forks. So, I remember when you guys first came out with Dual Air, where you had a separate valve to inflate the negative, separate from the positive. 
And I, I really like that system because I could set a little bit higher than the negative, so I, you know, to overcome that initial friction a little bit. And then, you know, you and everybody else is mostly has gone away from that, where you're using a check valve or some way of simultaneously filling both, and it kind of self equalizes. But why is a larger negative volume better than having like a separate adjustment where you can set the pressure a little bit higher in the negative? You know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it, um, you know, in an ideal world, um, it's not necessarily better or worse, right? But that is a complicated system when you think about it. And what we at RockShox try to do, and, and SRAM and all of our brands for that matter, is simplify things, right? So you look at our drivetrains, we simplify them, we remove the front derailleur, we make them capable of anything and everything without the front derailleur, giving you all the range that a two by or three by system would have, but simplifying. With Rock Sharks, it's very similar in the sense of it's very easy to complicate your suspension and to dial it in and make it wrong. So a lot of people can really mess up their suspension. And then and they wonder, why this works? Well, it's just horrible. <laughs> and so what we've tried to do is, is simplify it for the user and give them the right features. So in, in simplifying that and having our self-adjust system and knowing that we are feeling as though we are providing the consumer with the best possible product for what they're going to be doing for that application. So you know, as, as most people do, that our fourth lineup has different initial settings, right? So you look at a Lyric, you know, that's going to be our gravity focused, um, big mountain, longer travel fork that's nearly downhill capable, but our single ground. Um, certain travels are going to come with different bottomless tokens because we understand that there's a need to have it adjusted a little bit differently for you know a 160 mil travel versus a 170 versus a 180, all the way down into SID. When you're like, well, that's only 100 travel or 100 mils of travel, that the the amount of air pressure required, as well as you know the bottomless tokens that are required, a different chargers or, or different charger dampers required because we feel that the compression needs to be a little bit more firm versus you know a Lyric or a Pike. Um, we definitely adjust the lineup with similar technologies, but try and get it out the door to the consumer for the right application, adjusted within so a window. it feels pretty good right Within a the window. We wanna, we wanna definitely provide a consumer the right window to start in, you know, because we feel that there's a lot of um, brands and, and suspension out there that, you know, it's, it's just fact of the matter that the window's huge and they can go all the way down in this spectrum or all the way down in this spectrum just to prove that I can feel it in the parking lot, but that's not even a rideable setting, right? right? So it's like, oh, I can feel how slow my suspension is. Look, I can, it almost it doesn't does even work. come back. And you're like, yeah, now what's happened there is you, you've eliminated a finer tuned adjustment that was possible that could have been created on the inside from the get go. But instead that, you know, said company or said product it's trying settings. to overcompensate in that those different directions that aren't even necessary. And we're trying to just refine where it's like, okay, this is this is right where we feel, you know, for example, to your question, we feel that the best negative air volume is gonna be for a one sixty lyric insert, you know, new Devon air spring. And that's where our Devon Air technology comes in and our Devon Air Spring that we put into certain ports in our lineup that where we're like, this is what we feel is gonna be necessary. Right. I or at least get them within that starting point. Right? Yeah. And then you've got the bottomless tokens for fine tuning and everything else. Yeah. So a little bit of prognostications to close with here. I mean, it seems to me like unless you move to a, a larger lower or larger chassis or something, like I don't know where you guys can find more negative volume. So like where is that going? Like have you guys topped out what you can do with an air spring in terms of like volumes and adjustments and stuff? Or is there Yeah, you know, I think that that honestly would go to you know what we just talked about and be another reference to that exact fact of you can overcompensate, right? So yeah, we've totally found the, the ceiling where you're like, <laughs> you don't need you know 50% of your fork or your air spring to be negative mm -hmm. because that's not gonna feel good. You're, you're gonna dive through your travel in that, that suppleness and that really light breakaway force before it actually supports you where you need it. You know, so like there's a definite there's a definite right and wrong, right? I mean, suspension is, is not just theory. It's actually like, well, if you intend on riding a 160 bike or a 140 bike the way it's intended to be used, or even just above, because we all know we do that, or just below, there's gonna be a general like, well, yeah, you, you definitely need more than, for example, 
10 PSI in your tires, Tyler. You can't go out because you're going to hit the rim, you're going to flatten, your tires are functionally not going to work. It's the same with your suspension. If you go out there and you have your undersprung, or in this case, if your negative air spring is legitimately just like, why would a company do it? Like, I don't need 50% of my travel to just blow through before I'm actually riding, because then it would actually be pointless the way that some adjustments are, right? So I think that's that would be, I think the best way I would answer of like, we're not really searching for more negative air, air spring, you know, volume. Um, and I think that goes right back to, if you look at our, our super luxe shocks, right? We, we feel like we've dialed in that range of what is, you know, gonna be good and what's not good or over, you know, overcompensating or overdoing it in that sense. Right. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Thanks a lot for your time. Yeah, man. As far as trends go, what do you guys see for Marzocchi coming up in the near future? Like, what, what are the suspension trends you guys are trying to address right now? Sure. Um, I think right now it's about creating momentum for the brand. So getting people excited about it, uh, getting people to ride it because it doesn't really like impact you until you ride it and you just are hit with how much performance is in the fork that's uh, you know, in the mid-range. Uh, and then trend-wise, uh, we'll be keeping up with offset and that sort of thing to, the, you know, to be able to cater to those frame manufacturers that are looking at shallower offsets. And yeah. So do you guys have the, sh the shorter offsets now for the bikes that are getting a little slacker and a little longer? So in the aftermarket, we'll have more of a standard range of offsets. So the forks will be out in you know, late May okay. uh, and it'll be pretty traditional in that sense, but we're planning for and will support shorter offset, especially uh, if we have on that over. Side. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah.